My name is Leo Skier and I'm an Applications Engineer at National Instruments and today I'm going to be talking about my implementation of a complementary filter. A complementary filter is a type of sensor fusion algorithm and it aims to take different types of sensor data and combine that information to provide a more accurate representation of what you're trying to measure. So in my complementary filter I'm trying to measure the tilt of my MyDAC. I have an accelerometer and a gyroscope and I'm putting these through my complementary filter to try and get a better representation of the tilt of my MyDAC. So the accelerometer and the gyro both have their advantages and disadvantages and the complementary filter aims to take the advantages of both sensors and combine them to get a more accurate representation of the tilt of my MyDAC. So the MyDAC is a data acquisition device provided by National Instruments and it's bus powered and it allows me to easily read from my accelerometer and gyroscope and pull in the raw sensor data into LabVIEW. And once we've got that sensor data in LabVIEW, we're going to convert it into something more meaningful, so from a raw voltage to something that means something to us, and then we're going to pass it through the complementary filter. Here we have the front panel of the complementary filter. On the right hand side we have a chart displaying the information from the gyro accelerometer compared to the filtered value from the complementary filter. And the same information is shown along the bottom using these 3D picture controls to give a really good visual representation. On the top left then we have some debug parameters as well as some configuration parameters. So what I'd like to do now is show you the complementary filter in action. So if I pick the MyDAC up and I hold it at 45 degrees you can see the filtered value in the middle is showing around about 45 degrees and it's really in tune with what I'm doing with the MyDAC itself and if I go to around about minus 45 degrees you can see that there but if you notice the gyro which is the white 3D picture control you can see that it's drifting so even though I'm holding it at 45 degrees over time the value has drifted away from what it actually is this is one of the disadvantages of the gyro that it suffers from drift the accelerometer on the other hand you can see even though I'm holding it still here the accelerometer is moving around a fair bit it's got very small jit it's got a small amount of jitter around about the minus 45 degree mark and what the complementary filter does then is tries to ignore this jitter so it looks at the sort of general value of what the accelerometer is so if I hold it back at 0 degrees then you can see that the accelerometer holds can read that value quite well and so does the gyro pretty quickly you can see the bump on the chart but after a while then it begins to drift off and you can see that the green value, so the filtered value from the complementary filter is a pretty good representation of what the MyDAC is actually held, being held at in terms of degrees. So if I place the MyDAC down and show you the block diagram for this. So all of this code at the top is for the 3D picture control just to show that information to the user. And the interesting stuff are these four functions here at the bottom. So the first one reads in the voltage from the accelerometer and the gyro the accelerometer function converts this voltage into something meaningful so a value of degrees which gets passed into our filter and similar for the gyro we convert the voltage read from the gyro into a value of degrees per second that gets passed into the filter the filter looks at these two values and then gives an estimate for what it thinks the value of tilt is and we can display that on the chart and compare it to the two other values as well so I'm not going to delve too much into those four functions, but if you want to know more information, I explain it quite heavily inside the VIs themselves, which I'll post online and put a link in the in the description for the video. And there's also a tutorial which goes through more of the theory and how the filter is actually working, which would be a really good thing for you to look at if you're inter if you're interested in finding out about more how the filter works and not.